excitement is building as SpaceX prepares two Starships for crucial tests. In just one day, the company launched two Falcon 9 rockets, maintaining its tight schedule. Crew 11 preparations are proceeding on time, keeping the mission on track. Meanwhile, Europe is launching a Vegas rocket carrying a special cargo to space. Let's discuss it all in today's episode of NR Studio. In my last update, I said that the S-38 ramp closure schedule likely meant there would be a cryogenic test on Pad A. Today, I can confirm that part. S-38 will undergo a cryogenic test. But what happened next was even more surprising. The new ramp closure schedule indicates that S-37 will be moved from the late evening of July 27th to the early morning of July 28th. During the same period, a stand was set up in Mega Bay 2. Immediately afterward, S-38 was placed in the stand and driven directly to the Massey test site. The change was surprising. I previously said that S-38 would be tested in extremely cold temperatures on Pad A before conducting a static firing test. However, SpaceX chose to send S-38 directly to Massey. I initially thought Pad A would be the only test site, but I realized I was wrong. In retrospect, this choice seems logical. The Massey test site was damaged in the S-36 accident, but it recovered more quickly than expected. The damage primarily affected the ship's test stand, the ship's quick disconnect interface, and the fuel lines. The fuel farm suffered only minor contamination. The farm was cleaned up by replacing the fuel pipes and adding a new transport platform. Cryogenic testing at Massey is now underway. This ability to change demonstrates how quickly SpaceX can adapt and return to critical testing tasks. S-38's cryogenic test at Massey will be one of the largest tests at Starbase in the coming days. Once the cryogenic test is complete, S-38 will return to Megabay 2 for further installation. This includes the engine, flap system, and any ground equipment needed for the next static firing test. Although Flight 10 has not yet taken off, planning for Flight 11 is already well underway. S-38's schedule coincides with B-17, which completed its cryogenic test in early April. B-17 is also preparing for a static firing test. If all goes well, SpaceX may be able to launch flights 10 and 11 back-to-back. -back. This could set a new record for the fastest time between flights, which currently stands at 37 days. Of course, flight 10 is the next important step based on the new schedule. S-37 is also active. On the morning of the 28th, a transport platform appeared at Mega Bay 2, and S-37 was likely lifted to the test stand on Pad A. If all goes according to plan, S-37 should be at the test stand by the time you watch this video. Since S-38's cryogenic test doesn't take time on Pad A, S-37 should remain on schedule. The plan calls for at least two static firing tests. This test is crucial to demonstrate how well the throttle works, how it handles heat, and how it performs in hot conditions. The current schedule indicates the test will take place on July 29th and 30th. SpaceX has completed construction of the test setup on Pad A in preparation. The spacecraft's QD frame and associated piping are fully installed. Scaffolding and support beams have been lowered, indicating the platform is complete. A new tank has been added to the tank farm. This tank will likely help load fuel for the cryogenic and static fire tests. These preparations indicate that SpaceX is ready for the next phase of crucial testing. If the test is successful, S-37 will return to Mega Bay 2 for engine installation, final system checks, and flight termination system setup. These steps typically take about a week. Barring any delays, the launch is still likely to occur in the first half of August. Viewers can share their predictions for the launch date in the comments. I think August 4th is a good date to aim for, provided there are no technical issues. Before the main event, Flight 10, we will be treated to two important appetizers, S-38 cold test and S-37 engine burn test. A lot is expected to happen in the next few days as we head into August. Are you excited for the new Starship test? Let me know in the comments by saying I'm ready. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with SpaceX. Next, let's focus on a launch capability that only SpaceX can routinely perform, a feat that continues to redefine what we can do in rocketry. In a remarkable display of efficiency, SpaceX completed two Falcon 9 launches in just 24 hours. Most aerospace companies would find this speed nearly impossible, but for SpaceX, it's quickly becoming commonplace. The first of two missions launched at 5.01 a.m. Eastern Time from SLC-40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The rocket carried a new group of Starlink satellites into space. Mission Booster B-1078 
performed flawlessly and landed safely on the drone ship Lack of Gravitas, based in the Atlantic. This landing marked the 22nd successful booster recovery, demonstrating how well SpaceX's reusable rocket technology works. About an hour after liftoff, it was confirmed that all 28 Starlink satellites were successfully placed in orbit. This new addition to the constellation is significant, especially since the network has seen a number of satellites fall from orbit over the past year. The Starlink system recently experienced a brief outage that caused a quick but significant shutdown. These ongoing launches are helping to improve and strengthen the performance and reliability of the satellite network. With this mission, Falcon 9 officially completed its 92nd flight of the year, achieving the same number of launches as all of 2023 combined. Interestingly, this achievement occurred while it was still in July. As the year progresses, the company aims to break last year's record of 132 launches and move closer to its goal of 170 flights by 2025. Following this remarkable achievement, SpaceX launched another Falcon 9 just hours later at 12.31 a.m. Eastern Time on July 27. The launch took place from SLC-4E, located at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Like the previous flight, this launch carried another group of Starlink satellites and was also successful. The B-1075 launcher landed precisely on the unmanned spacecraft, of course, I still love you, in the Pacific. This was the 19th successful landing. Satellites from both missions launched as planned, helping SpaceX achieve another major milestone. With this dual launch, the number of Starlink satellites in space has now surpassed 8,000. This demonstrates SpaceX's position as a leader in satellite internet and highlights how well their methods can improve. What is even more remarkable about this achievement is not just the back-to-back -back launches, but also the systems and strategies that made them possible. The Falcon 9 platform is designed for rapid turnaround and reliable performance. With launch pads on both coasts, SpaceX can easily switch between missions without long waits. The rockets are individually designed, undergo thorough inspections after each flight, and the company's automated landing system operates with incredible precision. All of these factors contribute to achieving this incredible speed. In short, these two launches in less than a day demonstrate why the Falcon 9 is the most reliable and frequently used rocket in the world. The Falcon 9 is not only known for its speed, flexibility, and effective reusability, these qualities are key aspects. These are the key ideas that set SpaceX apart. As the years go by and more new products are released, we expect these records to continue to be broken. From launching satellites and basic missions to targeting other planets, SpaceX is not only at the forefront, but also redefining the meaning of success. SpaceX is doing a fantastic job with its Falcon 9 rocket and Starship, but it is also making progress with its Dragon spacecraft. The Dragon spacecraft is crucial to the company's ever-growing launch operations. As we prepare for the Crew-11 mission, we have many important steps ahead. Crew-11 is scheduled to launch on July 31st. To prepare for this momentous occasion, the Crew Dragon spacecraft was transported to Florida on July 24th. A few days later, the spacecraft docked with its Falcon 9 rocket. Many expected this mission to utilize the old booster B-1067, which holds the record for most reuses. That task was assigned to booster B-1094, which has completed three flights to date. While B-1094 isn't the most experienced in flight, it remains a reliable and proven booster. After the stacking process, the completed Falcon 9 and Dragon rocket were brought to the launch pad and positioned vertically. The next steps will likely involve static test firings and a full wet dress rehearsal. This test ensures all rocket components and ground systems are functioning as intended. As part of this process, the crew will practice on their own to familiarize themselves with the steps they will take before launch. The astronauts have arrived in Florida after completing quarantine, meaning they are preparing for final preparations. This mission is also crucial for the Crew Dragon spacecraft. This will be the Crew Dragon Endeavor's sixth mission, demonstrating that the spacecraft can fly beyond the five missions originally envisioned. This demonstrates that SpaceX's Crew spacecraft are reusable and designed for longevity, which bodes well for the future of human spaceflight. However, things haven't always been smooth sailing. Some reports suggested that the Crew 11 mission might hit space debris on its way to the ISS, is prompted an important meeting with SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell, who reviewed the situation with the mission team. 
Currently, no official delays have been announced, but we are monitoring the situation very closely. Everyone is confident that this issue will be resolved safely and on schedule, keeping the crew safe.